Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is Escaping Atheism. I am your host, Max, along with our friend Deflating Atheism. We're here Hello. to try and... Hey, guy. How you doing? How's your week been? Uh, all right. Uneventful. I uh, I uh, have had an interesting week because the, the atheist storm on, on Twitter and other social media seemed to fade for about a week after the New Year's, and then all of a sudden... It was like the swallows returning from Capistrano. They just started swamping me and Eve Kinnainen and a whole bunch of other uh, people who are critical of atheists the last week. It's been intensifying all of a sudden. Like, atheist butthurt seems to be over 9,000 these days and just growing, <laughs> not shrinking. Um, even, they take, even they take a little uh, Christmas vacation, I guess. I guess so, at least, at least after Easter, although they were horrible with all the Jesus myth or crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, everybody's listening. What we're going to do is it gets tiring to respond to atheist videos. It really does. Because for the most part, atheists, uh, and we're going to look at a guy named Kyle Kalinske, who runs something called Secular Talk here. Always Which is by, part of the, we should say, it's part of the uh, uh, Young Turks network. Oh, well, that shouldn't surprise anybody. The Young Turks, I used to be a big uh, a Young Turks fan and appreciator, and I used to like sing. I used to be a supporter of the uh, Wolf Pack that Sink used to do. Oh, my, how they've fallen. Now they've just turned into the worst sorts of bigots, um, not just against religious people, but they are bigots against religious people. And what gets me is none of them ever have the guts to talk to smart religious people. None of them do. Mm -hmm. uh, they really won't. Uh, they'll talk to dumb religious people. Or they'll talk when they get a chance to control the terms of the debate uh, so that nobody can make them question their stuff. So we, I even get requests to respond to atheist videos, and they usually give me a headache when I get these requests because it's like, please tell me there's something smart in it. And the answer is almost always, no, there's nothing smart in it, so please tear it apart. I'm like, uh, is there so a limit what? on atheist stupid? I mean, really. So today we're not even going to pretend like there's anything smart, like there's anything uh, substantive in this video. No, there's no reason That's to. The hmm? Lowest of the low hanging fruit. Yeah, and so I think what we're going to do is we're going to watch like one minute of this at a time, and then we're going to pause and look and see if he said anything substantive or meaningful that wasn't just being a jerk or being stupid or being a pseudo scientist or being a pseudo historian. Uh, let's give it a go, okay? Shall we? Okay. All right, secular talk. By the way, you notice how atheists now think they own secularism? Yeah, yes. anyway, we'll talk about that. Here we go. Let's 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 look the great genius atheist thinker Kyle Kalinsky on why most people are stupid because they don't think like him. We have some new numbers here uh, from Pew Research. This is about religion in America. So, first of all, we look at uh, the question of belief in God. So, these numbers uh, depress me, not going to lie to you guys. 63% uh, of the American people are absolutely certain that God exists. 63% are absolutely certain of something that they cannot be absolutely certain of. Okay, 20 on top of that are fairly certain God exists. Oh, come on, man. So let's, let's do the math on that. It's 83. So 83% of the American people are either absolutely certain or fairly certain that God exists. That's 83% who are wrong. Wrong, wrong. They're wrong because that's not true. First of all, you can't be absolutely certain of something that exists if it doesn't actually exist. Because then you're certain of something that you're wrong about. So you are wrong. It's okay. okay. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm all right, right there. Cut him right. Okay. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay, I got. Okay, bad, stupid shit. Let's see. Well, you know, actually, when you get right down to it, no, he says basically 83% who are sure or pretty sure there's a God, which, by the way, is a rational conclusion based on evidence, Kyle, yeah. as it is. Um, and he's declaring them wrong. And at first, I'll let you observe. At first, I thought he said they are wrong, which means he would get the Atheist Courage Award for admitting he's taking a position. Yes. But then he, 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 he qualified, I noticed, and said are wrong to be certain. And I was like, really? Are you certain about that, Kyle? What did you notice? Yes, well, well, he says, you know, if, if, if you believe in something that doesn't exist, you are wrong, therefore oh. the certainty that you have is, is wrong. Yes, so that's his, that's his uh, uh, completely airtight logic there. 
complete equivocation. I, it really yeah. is complete equivocation. I want to tell you why, because for those of you who aren't listening, it is, it, is, it is well established that God is not a concept owned by one religion. Some religions claim to have more truth about God than others, um, but no religion owns God. That's just uh, basic philosophy, even basic theology 101. The only people who argue with that are Christian fundamentalists, some other religious fundamentalists, and atheists like Kyle. Leading to the honest question is, why is he so ignorant, and why isn't anybody trying to help him fix his ignorance? Um, well, because they're they're kind of uh, enmeshed in, in this whole kind of mutual appreciation society where they'll never correct each other. No, and they'll never... They're like a gentleman's agreement that, yeah, I'm going to let you say what you have to say. I'm not going to point out the flaws in it if you don't do the same to me. And so that's, that's why these these kind of uh, little self-congratulatory echo chambers really just, just have such a, a, a you know, nullifying effect uh, on thought is because people just congratulate themselves into dumbness, essentially. Uh, yeah, congratulations. I'm an atheist. I'm smarter than at least 83% of the stupid yes. population. Um, and then you wonder why you're not liked. Did you ever consider another alternative there, Kyle? Yes, because, right. because I can bandy about uh, invisible sky fairy memes and uh, Bronze Age goat herder memes. That makes me smarter than Newton and Kepler and Heisenberg and Ryman and Dusty. That time was Aquinas. Oh. Had Father Lemaitre. Let me just keep going. All right, let's do another minute of this. This is this is easier. Oh. This is easier with a friend. I must tell you. Let's go. Another minute. Here we go. It's like saying I'm certain that there's a unicorn on my roof right now. I'm certain of it. That's nice. Maybe we should get you some Seroquel or some Thorazine and put you in a straitjacket. Because there's not a unicorn on your roof. There's not a fucking unicorn. So if you say that, people go, oh, you're, you're a little off, aren't you? But if you say, I'm certain God exists. Yes, there's a fucking space wizard that's looking after your every move. Because you're so special with your fucking, you know... I wake up in the morning and I have fucking raisin bran and I take a shit and I go to work and I'm an accountant, but God really cares. Nobody fucking cares. Nobody fucking cares. God doesn't care. What? What? I, there was a lot there. There. Was <laughs> we only made it. We, that was only 32 seconds. Oh my God. We're not gonna and by a lot, that. I don't mean of substance. I mean, there was a lot of stupidity in there. No. They just pack in assumption after assumption after assumption, don't they? I love it. Unicorn, by the way. Oh, yes. I, I have a set of, I need to add Space Wizard, but I have a set of... of, of a bingo of, card. Bingo cards. I need to make them and flesh them out more, but I should add Space Wizard onto the oh, Atheist Bingo. Uh, also, uh, you know, we need Seroquel or some other psychothorazine or something, so he thinks we're insane. Yes. He, much like uh, Peter Bogosian, I, I, I assume he thinks that, that religious people should be drugged out of their faith. <laughs> you know about that. You've heard about that, right? No. Okay. I know. I, I, I'm laughing, but I'm not laughing because I, 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 when I hear that, because that is the same stuff that atheist ideologues in other countries have actually done to people. Yes. They yes. do it to people in Cuba sometimes. They do it to people in China. They used to do it in the Soviet Union. They used to do it in Romania. They just... Ah. Oh, oh. yeah, so, uh, oh, wait, Peter Bogdanian or whatever, is that the guy who was the... Uh, Guy who's saying like basically we can have abortions two or three years after birth. Just no, that's Peter Singer. Oh, that's a that's a different atheist. Yeah, Sorry. no, this, this is a uh, you know the book uh, a manual for creating atheists. Have you ever heard that? No, is it another manual? Is it another atheist recruitment guide? I, I'm actually surprised you haven't heard because this was like big news in the uh, atheist uh, marine sphere like a year or two ago. But yes, yeah, so there, there's this there's this professor Peter Bogosian. Who, who, I might be mispronouncing his name, but he wrote a book, A Manual for Creating Atheists. And supposedly that's what started a, a street epistemology where you have these people. Uh, you saw the uh, Aaron Ra video. Uh, uh, yeah, with, uh, I, with couldn't, I and, couldn't get through it, except it's nice to know that these, these creepy cultists are actually getting more and more brazen and making it obvious that they are cultists trying to, con con co to to recruit people. I think I know the name you're talking about. I just didn't remember the title. I think this is the same guy who's out there with the statistic, a phony statistic I'm hearing now that 80% of Sweden is atheist, which is a ludicrous lie. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same guy, right? It th sounds like him. Um, atheists just make shit up, and they really don't even understand science.
They really don't. Um, once again, anybody who's listening, once again, God can't be reasonably compared to a space wizard or a unicorn. We're talking about something infinitely simple and uh, infinite in all directions, beyond time and space, not a space wizard. Okay, We're talking about the thing responsible for reality being here. And just so you know, most Christians believe that the Greek philosophers had that three, four hundred years before Christ. So do most Jews. And, and, and so do other religions. Uh, because it's a logical conclusion based on evidence. I'm sorry, it just is. By the way, can I just say uh, say something here? And you'll notice in his own kind of inept way uh, uh, what, what Kyle Kalinske here is doing. It's a lot like what the uh, street epistemologists do, is that they introduce kind of unnecessary intermediate steps into the into the kind of quote-unquote reasoning process to make it seem like there's more there than there really is. And yeah. so here you have Kyle Kalinske saying, no, your, your belief – that there's a unicorn. By the way, that's that's so novel. This this guy is just such a daring renegade thinker. Oh yeah. Unicorn analogies. Where do these people come up with this stuff? I just just the originality and and, and just incisiveness here just just boggles the mind. He he's brilliantly comparing a, a space wizard unicorn writing a writing a rainbow unicorn to the unmoved mover. Kyle, you're so well trained and such a sharp intellect. <laughs> it's not just it's not just any it's a unicorn on top of a garage. That is a, a, a sly <laughs> winking nod to a Carl Sagan, I believe. Oh, but uh but yeah, oh, so, so the unicorn on the garage, he said, No, your belief that there's a unicorn on top of the garage can't be valid because the unicorn is not there. It's like, why deal with that step about the validity of my belief if you if you don't think there's a unicorn on top of the garage? Prove it, you know, do something. And so it's it's a lot like the street epistemologist. It's like, well, how can I look at a person and tell if their reasoning process is valid when they say something? It's like you shouldn't be looking at the person. You shouldn't be looking at the reasoning process. You should be examining the belief itself. Atheists but, always do that too. They go straight to your personality. You even know responses to this are going to be about um, me, my looks, you, your looks, my kid, anything but what we have to say. Because yeah. That's what these folks are like. Um, come on, we're not going to get through this if we keep stopping. Let's see if we can get a full I, minute. I'm sorry. Can, can, I, you're going to hate me for this, but can you rewind back to the to – the Yeah, sure. Let's, let's, uh, but you, now you're going to make me listen to more atheist stupid? Uh, I hate you. I hate you. You're going to torture me more with Kyle. All right, let's go. It's like saying, I'm certain that there's a unicorn on my roof right now. I'm certain of it. That's nice. Maybe we should get you some Seroquel or some Thorazine and put you in a straitjacket. Because there's not a unicorn on your roof. There's not a fucking unicorn. So if you say that, people go, oh, you're, you're a little off, aren't you? But if you say, I'm certain God exists. Yes, there's a fucking space wizard that's looking after your every move. Because you're so special with your fucking, you know... I wake up in the morning and I have fucking raisin bran and I take a shit and I go to work and I'm an accountant, but God really cares. Nobody fucking cares. Nobody fucking cares. God doesn't care. There's no God there. Look, I'm being an asshole. I know I'm being an asshole, but I'm being an asshole for a reason. I'm trying to shake people out of their false beliefs and their complacency. Okay, so wait a minute. I heard what the hell was that? Uh, something echoed, so let me just keep hit play oh, again. I unmuted. Like, you're, why are you okay with just believing something that's not true? Look, I get it, man. If you're somebody in prison and you got nothing going for you, and you need to have that existential blanket to lay on of God, I don't agree with you, but it's your prerogative. Look, it's your prerogative even if you're not in prison. Obviously, I believe in freedom of religion. I believe in freedom of belief. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm going to back that up because I don't believe he believes in freedom of religion at all. But yeah. we'll get to that. Um, again, at least he is going again and again. I notice. Saying again and again, there is no God. So I just want to know, does he still claim his lack of belief? Or yeah, exactly. Actually, or has he actually gone over and become the intellectually honest atheist who will take the position that there is no God, period? In which case, you know, he has some questions to answer because uh, logically that's a, ra that's a rather ludicrous proposition and we have every right to be skeptical of that extraordinary claim. What do you want to bet we can't get him to admit that it's a lack of belief, though? Um, <laughs> even though he's saying doesn't exist, it's a delusion, it's wrong, it's crazy, like, you know. Um, you mean you can't get him to admit it's not just a lack of belief? 
admit that it's disbelief. It is a belief that there yeah. is no such thing as God. It's a belief yes. that there's no God. It's the teaching that there's no God, the doctrine that there's no God, which many dictionaries still carry. Yes. Um, one of the big things I think everybody needs to hear is that the biggest lie in organized atheism today is the it's lack of belief. It's just lack of belief. Yeah. Any atheist who says that, you know, you should ask them one or two skeptical questions to make sure they're not just young and confused. But otherwise, any atheist who says that's a liar. I would say I, I would say that is the second biggest lie, but it goes hand in hand with the biggest lie, which is there is no evidence for God. Oh, and that so, is the biggest. Evidence. And so the atheist will say, "Oh, I lack a belief," but then they'll they'll amend that definition. I lack a belief because there is a lack of evidence for God. And so, well, is that a, is that an essential part of the definition of atheist? That yes, uh, uh, you affirm that there is a lack of evidence, or is that an inessential? Just it may be you you know, you may be motivated by by a supposed lack of belief because if if you are if if that is an essential part of being an atheist is the uh, claim that there is no evidence for god well that's a claim you're ba you're right back in claim land you know and and then what they'll do is that though, although there is boat you don't even have to touch a holy book to see boatloads of evidence in the physical universe as well as you know in the non-physical yeah. as simply purely through logic um i'm sorry the evidence is there mr kolinsky you have chosen to ignore it but then well we at least hope you're ready to back up the claim that it's all false by the way uh did you get that whole thing with i'm an accountant and i eat my raisin bran and i'm not well i didn't understand the reference i just assumed he was trying to say that everyday humans are worthless and unimportant which is another frequent atheist claim by the way that you're worthless and unimportant and that you should accept this and it makes you strong as a human being if you accept that you are worthless and unimportant and well no i mean he, he values the the accountant who eats raisin bran above the guy in, rotting away in jail oh did he that, who has right. nothing else but his existential security blanket yes security blanket i love it i love it I, I john lennox is right about these guys these guys are afraid to have a thought yes these atheists are afraid they're afraid of the light is what they are i mean again uh, let's try and get through another minute of this oh my god this is painful people <laughs> you have no idea the hit we're taking for you just to bring you this quality <laughs> entertainment okay let's give it a see if we can do another minute of this but i also believe in my freedom of speech to tell your ass that you are incorrect. So for the longest time, it's atheists and agnostics who have been shamed. Sh shut up! Shut up! Don't you dare question religious beliefs. Don't you dare question something like that. Ever. Shut up. You shut up. How about we don't shut up? How about we can have a conversation? So you want to go ahead and come out there and make your argument that a fucking zombie Jewish carpenter who's three people but he's one person died and came back to life, and there was a virgin, and there was a burning bush, and a fucking talking snake. Go ahead, make that argument. It's a weak-ass argument. Because guess what? Your mythologies that you were born and raised in are no b more correct than the mythologies in the other religions that you're atheist towards. You know, you don't believe in, you know, Hinduism. You don't believe in Buddhism. You don't believe in Mormonism. You don't believe in Sikhism. You don't believe in Amazonian tribal gods. You don't believe in... All of Muhammad, you don't believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. Look at that. Another minute of stupid. Yes. Another minute of dishonest. Um, yes. you, atheists always lie. I keep using that line, and I hope you others will start using it. Atheists do always lie. Um, notice the slippery use at the beginning of atheists and agnostics supposedly being silenced and told to shut up. Big yeah. fat atheist lie. Big yeah. fat atheist lie has always been a big fat atheist lie. I'm sorry, Kyle. I'm 50 years old. When I was a kid, I knew atheists and agnostics, and nobody persecuted them, and nobody forced them to shut up. They would ask them to be polite when people were doing things like celebrating religious events or doing things like, my mother died, oh, I'll say a prayer for you. Really, ever since I was a kid in the 70s, there were people around who were not religious, and no one persecuted them. Yeah. Um, when I was young, I used to be, I, I used to be, you know, I eventually became irreligious. I managed to keep religious friends. I would tell my friends I wasn't religious. Sometimes I'd even say, I just don't think I believe. And nobody hated me for it. This huge myth that, that of the persecuted atheist is just that. It's, it's a victim narrative. In fact, I'm going to repeat that it's a cultural Marxist style victim narrative. 
um, they spin religious people as the oppressors, as if they're the capitalist class in Marxist dialogue, dialogue and the atheists are victims. And, and then they'll, you, you know, they'll prop up atheists who've generally, genuinely been wrong, but then they will ignore religious victims, including Christian victims, who are more, far more frequently. Mm -hmm. And I see the atheist uh, little lasso trick where everybody who has doubts, everybody's agnostic, gets to be lumped in with atheists. I've known agnostics my whole life. Nobody ever told agnostics to shut the fuck up and that they were evil. I'm sorry. Right. They've been around forever. And... You look at the history uh, in the universities, going back hundreds of years, agnostics uh, were always tolerated and doubters were always tolerated. You go back to the medieval era when the Catholic Church was supposedly so awful, people like Thomas Aquinas and other monks were having public debates as to whether or not God existed. And yeah. nobody got stoned. Yeah. Which uh, kind of goes one of my favorite uh, uh, counterfactuals of atheists is where we point out that you know all, all these all these great scientists were Christians, like, you know, Newton, Kepler, oh, well, that's because they would have been executed if they had ever, if they had ever admitted their atheism. So, so they're claiming to know something they, they can't possibly know on the basis of no evidence at all. It's atheist, yeah, yeah, it's like, it's atheist yeah, uh, pseudo history. It's atheist pseudo history is what it is. We know Newton was very religious, actually. Yeah. Although Newton had was some... a closet atheist, which is why he wrote more about the Bible than he did about science, because that's what closet atheists do, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. He did have some offbeat and offball and weird religious beliefs, but definitely, they were definitely religious beliefs. Um, it's unusual. If you can't understand why the concept of the unmoved mover is useful in physics even today, please go back and study Aristotle, Mr. Kolinsky. And then look at people like Father Lemaitre and Heisenberg, who both believed in it. Yes. Unmoved mover, and it influenced their work. Also, just got a shout out to mythologies. We would have grown up believing the mythologies of our other culture. First off, category error, theology and spirituality are not the same as mythology. Deep spiritual thinkers all have recognized that there are myths and then there's theology uh, yeah. in multiple religions. Second, Christianity makes specific truth claims. So does Judaism. Other religions frequently don't make specific truth claims. Um, and most serious religions believe there's truth in other religions. I can show you in the Catechism of the Hated Catholic Church clearly spells out that other religions have valid spirituality and valid truth in them. And that's, that's a, a, another, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. No, here. Go ahead. That, that is another atheist talking point. Oh, it's, oh, well, I believe your religion is bullshit, just like you think all the other religions are bullshit. It's like, no, I don't think all the other religions. I, I think, in fact, I think the big three all are, are right about a major thing, you know? And I'll give you a shout out to a guy named Rupert Sheldrake, who's an actual science, unlike, unlike anybody like Kyle here or anybody in their real network who's done research not just on, on, on standard science, but has also researched spirits, the, you know, spirit forces and spirituality in religions around the world, including pagans and shamans and all that, and found mark remarkable consistency in a lot of spiritual beliefs um, yes. that people have. Um, and then we have Justin Barrett's scientific work, which shows that it is normal and natural for children and adults to have spiritual beliefs, which is why most do. It can't be beat out of them. Mm. Even, even Daniel Dennett has admitted at this point that you can't get most people to be not, not religious in some sense, whether mm. they're believing in signs or life after death or you know, possibly a uh, ghost, uh, possibly heaven and hell. In fact, belief in, in heaven and hell is very prevalent even in non-Christian cultures. Yeah. Belief in yeah. heaven and hell existed among the Roman pagans. Yeah. Um, this, this is uh, like something I, I noticed like among my Facebook friends. Like, yeah, they'll, they'll, uh, uh, they'll post like a, an atheist republic or, or an I fucking love atheism meme graphic. And, and it's, it's such like easy sanctimony for them. But then like, They'll have a friend die, and then they'll say something that makes it clear that they believe in life after death. Yes. So, yeah. So not all these people who 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 are you know subscribing to this kind of internet atheism, they are not consistently uh, naturalistic in their beliefs. I recently talked to a guy named Justin Vakula. I'll put it on my channel at some point. He's already got it on his on his, and I frankly was very rude to him, and I don't care. Um, but he even tried, I was talking to him live and he even tried to sneak into me that it's okay to be an atheist and believe in reincarnation. And I'm like, 
motherfucker, you will slick anything in if it makes it part of your atheist universe. Really, yeah. atheists can believe in reincarnation. Okay, Carl, Kyle Kalinsky, if someone says they're an atheist but they believe in reincarnation, do you still consider them sane, sir, or do they need to be medicated? Yeah, yeah. I want to know. <laughs> I really do. I'm not even crapping on the idea of, of, of reincarnation. Christian theology generally won't admit to the idea. They don't, we don't like yeah. it, but can't leave it out as theoretical possibility. By the way, in case there was any confusion uh, here, I, I am most definitely pro the proper definition of atheism that does not take on any unneeded ideological baggage. So... I, I, if a person uh, does not believe in God but affirms ghosts and life after death and, and whatever, I'd still say they're an atheist. I, I, I don't know. I'd have to go back and forth because what I find is that once you scratch – because I've met such people, I found that much most people who self-identify as atheists, but they'll say they believe possibly in ghosts, possibly in signs, possibly in reincarnation, or they even outright believe in it. It's like – so, but you think you can have reincarnation or whatever it is, but there can't be some ultimate thing in charge of running everything in the book. Yeah. yeah, I believe in that. And I'm like, okay, so you just admitted you believe in God. So, I mean, it's funny too. You look at surveys of atheists, like Pew Research has done one. I'll find it if anybody asks me, showing that something like 20, 30% of, of, of that a certain percentage of self-described atheists even say they believe in God. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but they identify as atheist anyway. Oh. Well, that's all all the kind of uh, uh, variables about polling, you know. But I guess that Kyle here will tell us what the true atheist is. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, if you're going to play that again, I, I feel I should warn you. I feel I should uh, warn the, the listeners here. Uh, he's going to start using his baby voice, and, and it's going to make you want to tear your eyeballs out. Oh, God. Okay, I'll just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the volume down on my headphones. Here we go. In all the other religions, you get the idea of being non-religious. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Why? I don't think it's true. But with your fucking mythical garbage, I, it has to be true. Why? Because my mommy and daddy were special, and they taught me that this is the real one, and I know it's the real one because I like my mommy and daddy, and they're good people. Yeah, they're good people who are part of Hinduism and Buddhism and Islam and all the fucking other religions and Scientology even. They're, I'm sure there's some good people in there. They've been duped by this fucking cult. That doesn't make it right. 83% of you believe something that is wrong. Look, here's the answer to that question. Are you certain God exists? No, of course not. I'm an adult. How the fuck would I know? So either you say, there's no evidence. I don't believe it. I don't think he exists. Or you say, I don't know. Anything outside of that, and you're failing in your logic. <laughs> or you're saying, you know what? I'm just going to put logic aside and say, I'm not going to allow it in this realm. This is one area where there is no critical scrutiny. There's one area where I'm just giving myself a pass to believe whatever the fuck I want. Okay, but then- Can we, okay. can we send him some G.K. Chesterton? Would he bother reading any of it? No, I kind of- No, don't. atheists are allergic to books. I love the slip into Scientology. Hey, Kyle, newsflash, it has been established now, although smart people have known this for a while yes. now, but it's now fully established that Scientology is an atheist cult. Yes, yes. And there is there is no belief in God or higher being at the highest levels. By the way, I would I think anybody sane would also consider the UFO people to be atheist cultists. Yeah. Um, because theists are people who believe in the ultimate creative force driving reality. And you don't even have to be any religion to believe in that thing. Many smart physicists like Heisenberg did. If you're believing in space aliens, you're already kind of in atheist territory because you're ignoring theistic implications for science fiction. Um, uh, uh, other, by the way, Kyle, just so you know, other atheists and cults, atheist cults and religions include objectivism by Ayn Rand, Marxism, which is clearly a creepy atheist religion, um, and 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 there are others because I've seen them. Um, so, yeah, did he say anything else there that that's worth observing? <laughs> Well, uh, he, uh, mind you, uh, uh, he, he, like a lot of atheists, he has no clue what logic is. No. He, he, thinks, he thinks the logic is just, as a word, is just interchangeable with like reason and rationality and all those other uh, let's pretend we sound smart words. Which, is, which is, always means I will be the arbiter of what is reasonable, rational, and I will be the exactly. arbiter of what exactly. is and is not, what, of what is not evident. Because I am the rational atheist who has declared myself a rationalist, I will get to declare what is evidence and what isn't. Yeah. <laughs> and notice how he just trumbles. I mean, the logic train here is just a travesty. Yeah. 
Oh my! I, I, you know what this is? This is like atheist. Uh, I'm gonna be mean to the Pentecostalists. I'm sorry. This is like atheist speaking in tongue. He's just babbling, making noises. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, I, I I lost my train of thought. But yeah, so he has no clue what logic is. Uh, he did the, he did the whole uh, the genetic fallacy because my mommy and my daddy. He always uses that little fucking grating baby voice. He does it in every single video because my mommy. And that's just oh my god! If I was there, I don't think I could resist the urge to punch him. I I and I just want to let him know, uh, Christians. Uh, I can refer you to C.S. Lewis. I can refer you to quite a few others. Thomas yeah. Merton. Uh, often find incredible wisdom in things like Taoism and Confucianism. Yeah. Uh, uh, when 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 Christians uh, found the Bantu tribes in in Africa in the middle of the 20th century, those people already had a strong idea of God, and as soon as they heard about the Christian religion, it tended to make sense to them. So they converted very quickly. Nobody was forced to. Yeah. Uh, and that's because an understanding of the uncreated Creator is pretty universal. Kyle, sorry, it just is. And it's that, a rational belief. What? I I, I mean that that goes to uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, why you know babies are atheists is such an inadequate thing because babies hold no prejudice towards the viability of, of theism or of Christianity. And more to the point, a child about God. Oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. It is also so scientifically established. It is also scientifically established in the peer-reviewed literature that children are natural-born believers, natural-born theists, and you pretty much have to beat it out of them. Yes. Beat it out of them, and even when you beat it out of them, it usually resurfaces later in life anyway. Yeah, yeah. There's also figures showing that actually two out of three self-declared atheists eventually leave the fold and become yes. theists of some sort. But here's these people acting like they own science, they own rationality, they own logic. I, I do notice, though, that he does keep going to the God doesn't exist thing. So he, he yeah. wavers between saying, well, I can't know if it exists, but it obviously doesn't. Well, no, his position is he doesn't know, but if another person claims that they believe in God, he can, he can definitively say that they are wrong in their belief that God exists, even though he is not taking the position that God does not exist. Okay, so let's say if if a KGB agent comes out of nowhere from Russia or something, and, and, he, and you, know, it, you know he's for the KGB, and he whispers in your ear, I put cyanide in your coffee, would you just say, no, I can't possibly know if he's telling the truth, <laughs> so I'm going to assume he's not. Yes. How yes. does this logic work exactly? I, oh I can't God. know for sure. Oh. But you, you see that so often with atheists is that is that yeah because like like a lot of faulty logic, uh, it, it rests on two pillars and they can hop from one pillar to another as as, as it's convenient for them. And so uh, like uh, uh, one thing is oh well a uh, god is a fairy tale it's 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 a myth it's whatever and yeah the, oh I merely lack a belief. And so that's that's what they put out to Christians when Christians ask them to prove anything or say, oh, well, I'm not asserting anything. I just lack a belief. But then when they talk to each other, I mean, you could go on like Atheist Republic or whatever, or any, you know, our atheism on Reddit. And it's just an understood there, God does not exist. But that's only the face they show to each other. I'll tell you, the, uh, well, exactly, and the problem is is that if you hang out in the atheism forums and just read them, or just find yourself in chat rooms with, with atheists, or start chatting with atheists, you know, because this used to happen to me a lot, and you know what, I'm going to vote that we just stop here because this man is not going to say anything more, or do you think there's something more here we need to say? How much time do we have left? we got two minutes of him, but that'll take us 15 minutes. Um, uh, I, th I think we should just plow through. All right, let's plow through because I had a few more things to say, especially because I caught him talking about uh, talking snakes. Oh. I'm going to mention talking snakes. Hang on. Okay, you got to earn that, and you ain't earning it if you're saying, I'm certain God exists, when you can't be. Okay. Just let me give you one more. Believes in heaven and hell. 55% of the American people believe in heaven and hell. 17% believe in heaven, but not hell. It's like people just make shit up. 3% believe in hell, but not heaven. 25% believe in neither. So only 25% of the country. Dude, you hit push to talk. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, 
just the fact that people disagree with him is just taking the wind out of him, you know? Poor bastard. Okay, it's, yeah, we stopped here. Let me point out something, repeat something I said before. Belief in heaven and hell, universal in humans, found in multiple languages going back many thousands of years. The pagan Romans believed in he heaven and hell before they ever converted to Christianity. In fact, hell is talked about by Jesus as if people already know the idea. Yeah. Even though it's not really talked about in the Old Testament at all in explicit yeah. terms. Jesus assumed because the belief in heaven and hell is pretty universal. Moreover, um, it's pretty universal that simple-minded people, regardless of religion, simple-minded people tend to, I mean, there's exceptions, right, but tend to go for real simplistic, why, yes, my body will be sitting covered in flames forever as I scream in torment, physically of the flames and heaven will be clouds and, and angels yeah. with wings when actually these concepts of heaven and hell are much more uh, heaven for example and nirvana uh you know the state of eternal bliss or whatever not too far apart not that dissimilar um if you get into advanced thoughtful people who talked about hell uh, c.s lewis is a good one read the great divorce it's more like well people like kyle who just won't have anything to do with god and therefore deny all good and say fuck you i want to be i don't want to be near you because i'm denying <laughs> again he's declaring most of humanity stupid yes and by the way he appears to be admit dis dismissing evidence because there's a lot of evidence for heaven and hell yeah. we even have scientific evidence for it now in the work of a dr jeff long and it's peer-reviewed and everything it's as good as any medical tracking star survey we, I, we we have data on this we really do and you can say the data is wrong my opinion is that this is not good enough but back it up because there's a lot of evidence that you can look at and go that's pretty convincing and i'm not easily fooled yeah I, I just um, like the way he's he's just clucking his tongue. Oh, these people, these people believe in heaven. Can you believe that? He's just oh, it just sounds like someone punched him in the gut. Well, it's like if if it's that big of a problem for you, present some evidence that heaven doesn't exist. If you can't, you have no leg to stand on. You know. And he's gonna say, well, prove it does. And okay, I'll tell you why. Because we have eyewitness accounts. Yes, and, tens and of thousands. Actually, we do. And going back throughout history. So your choice to dismiss those accounts is an arbitrary choice. Uh, eyewitness accounts are evidence admissible in court and in quite a bit of science. Yes. Uh, in fact, I would ask, ask him to look at how they do drug trials um, and, and reported in medical science. And, oh, guess what? Patient reported symptoms and reactions are like part of the science. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can choose to dismiss eyewitness testimony, but to sit there and say it doesn't exist, it's not evidence. I'm yeah. sorry, atheism is a, a position of willful denial of evidence. Yeah. It really is. This, this is what he's doing. He's not considering the evidence. He's not even talking about it. He's just, uh, let's see if we can plow through this, hey? Or uh, well, I just wanted to say one more thing. Uh, sure. uh, I, I, th I think it's interesting to, just to note that that you said that Jesus was speaking to an audience that already kind of assumed that, that heaven and hell existed. They didn't Even though they're not spelled out in the in the Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I just find it interesting because nowadays, now that people, as a matter of course, are resuscitated from the dead, this this happens very often. Yes. But in the olden days, when we did not have modern medical technology, if, if a person had a heart attack or whatever, they were dead. So they, they weren't coming back and telling us about their near-death experiences, and yet we still had that idea. And so it's almost like what we have learned since, with all this overabundance of, of eyewitness testimony, goes back to confirm what people originally believed, you know? And people originally had visions very similar to what is described in the modern scientific tracking reports. People have been having visions describing things very like that. So even though we can't say, well, I'm sure someone somewhere in history, you know, did have their heart stop and yeah. how it started again because someone punched them. And they Maybe they had NDEs, but people have been having religious experience describing very similar things for thousands of years. And in now, cultures. So. I'm going to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm going to name drop one of your favorite guys, although I'm sure it's an idea that you've heard bandied about. But uh, uh, in the uh, Penn and Teller bullshit about uh, near-death experiences. 
Oh. They, they have just kind of a just so story at the end where they say, oh, well, maybe it, this was evolved to uh, give people like a happy story uh, so they won't fear death and they'll continue the human race. They, they put like a, an evolutionary, an evo-psych just so story to explain the existence of, 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 uh, of near-death experiences. I, but that, I, makes no, that makes no fucking sense at all. And that bullshit episode was was clear obfuscation, ignoring other epi- other information. And there's been clear obfuscation on in the field ever since. Yeah. Uh, anybody listening should go to see a guy named Skeptico. He's actually kind of anti-Christian. Um, not totally, not not in a mean way. He's like he doesn't like the organized religion, the big bad Catholic Church, blah blah blah. But he's he's interviewed a few near-death experience researchers, real ones, and he's also interviewed some of the best known near-death experience so-called researchers who are neurologists and stuff who've even written books and articles and he's exposed the fact that none of those saying that it's just chemical effects have ever interviewed any near-death experience patients they haven't done real science they're speculating on what yeah and they're speculating that basically as your brain goes out there's like you know there's this frizzing out and that causes you to see people you know are dead who talk to you it causes you to meet an infinite being of infinite love and infinite power that tells you you know uh you're cared about and um all, go look at jeff long's work people seriously yeah. is all i can say you can't call it not evidence you just yeah. can't call it not evidence the other trick i've noticed when i mentioned this evidence is that atheists will then say oh so you're relying on that as your proof no, that's the other thing atheists play, right? They try and atomize all evidence. You know, yeah. if, if they played that way, if they were in court, it's like, okay, I can have the bloody knife that I stabbed you with, and I can say, you can't prove, you know, you've just got a bloody knife. You can't prove that's what killed you. And let's just attack the knife. And then when we're done attacking the knife, we'll, we'll attack the concept that I had the knife in my hand. And we'll go with that for a while. So even if I'm sitting there saying, you motherfucker, I stabbed him, and here's the bloody knife in my hand, the atheist will sit there and find a way to say that I didn't do it, right? Yeah. That, that, um, that kind of, when you talk about, like, the atomization of evidence, it kind of reminds me of, well, you'll try it out, like, a first cause argument. And I'll say, oh, well, that doesn't prove the Christian God. It's like, well, okay, so it doesn't prove the Christian God uh, specifically, so the entire thing should be thrown out, you know? The, the, the thing for any Christian or any religion who just wants to talk to an atheist who's being a jerk is to start by saying, do you consider God a rational concept first? Yeah. Because if the answer is no, I don't consider God a rational concept, then the, you can just stop. There's no reason yeah. to talk about Jesus. There's no reason to talk about Yahweh. There's no way, reason to talk about Allah. There's no reason to talk about the Brahma. There's no reason to talk about any of them if you are starting with, uh, that's not a rational concept in the first place. That is actually uh, one of my uh, favorite atheist stumpers because, because they don't have a Already made response to that when he when they say oh well I I am completely open to evidence I'm w- willing to follow the evidence where it leads I am not bound by belief I my mind is open to wonder I'm not bound to belief I'm willing to consider any possibility ask them okay are you willing to consider that 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 belief in God is rational are you willing to consider that maybe this is a topic other people understand better than you and have decided that God exists yep you will get fucking crickets. Yep. Yep. And so that's something to keep in mind. I've begun training my own child on this, and I I strongly recommend other parents do, regardless of your religion. If you're Jewish, start training your kids on how atheists like Kyle Kalinske lie, because this is really all he's doing here, Mm. is nonstop lying, um, because he's running over his own points. And I think he knows he can't back up most of his points. Yeah, yeah. He's a professional atheist. If he ever stops being an atheist, he's in big trouble. Exactly. Exactly. You could say that about a lot of people. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. Jack, Jack Lingland's not about to find a, a Jesus anytime soon because her paycheck depends on on her fan on feeding her fanboys what they want to hear. DJ Kirk, all those people. All right, let's see if we can just push through to the end on this. I'm sorry, man. No, it's all right. I'm gonna hold my breath. Come on, can we make it? Ah. Says, yeah, I'm not a kid. Tooth fairy's not real. Santa Claus isn't real. Yeah, heaven and hell. What are you talking about? There's no evidence for it. What? The majority say, I believe in heaven and hell. (sighs) This affects your quality of life. When people believe in magical thinking, it stifles scientific progress. And it stifles smart people improving our quality of life and the kind of future that we have. 
It's this kind of thinking that leads to, for example, a lack of action on climate change. And don't get me wrong, most of the blame is actually on the, the oil companies. And all right, you're going to make me stop. All right. Oh, all right. Well, you go. You go first. I got something to say, but you go first. Uh, well, this this goes back in, into into uh, uh, another atheist. I mean, none of this is original. It's all, it's all yep. the same recycled stuff. Yep. But yeah, somehow... Uh, religion, people's religious, people's private religious beliefs, and this is there, there, there is very much a germ of. Well, I'm sure you'd say there's most definitely there. There's a germ of totalitarianism here, where you say people's privately held religious beliefs is somehow blocking uh, uh, the, the, this this public good. That once people divest themselves of their religious beliefs, we'll be ushered forth into into this kind of techno utopia. What evidence they have to support this claim? It's it's like how does how do people's religious beliefs prevent anyone from doing any scientific work? Maybe a person doesn't think that science is the only thing worthwhile in life. That possibility doesn't seem to occur to them. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, he it, makes it, a reference to magic again. That's a common yeah. one, which shows even understand the misunderstanding of what magic is versus what the you know. It's nonsensical. I mean, I mean, if God is prior to the universe and God fixed its laws, obviously he's not going to be bound by its laws. So to say God is magical is just is just completely nonsensical. And here's the thing, too. Like a lot of atheists, and I was an atheist for a really long time and read a lot of atheist literature, a lot, and a lot of science, a lot, um, which is why I'm never afraid to go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with an atheist on science. I yes. really never am. Bring him to me. Because even if he's in a specialty, I don't know. Guess what? I'm Catholic. Bitch, we got smart Catholics out here. I got physicists who will come and back me up. I got mathematicians who will come up and back me up. I haven't needed it very often because mostly yeah. they don't understand science. And one of the things that's very obvious, having talked to a lot of scientists, including scientists who are undercover believers, who feel that they will threaten their careers if they reveal it. Yeah. That's And that's also a problem for a lot of others, like Eve Kinnainen's um, – can't reveal her real identity. She'd probably lose her job um, just because she's a believer. But when it comes to stifling science, it's very obvious now that atheists are harming science. Yeah. And they have been for a while. They, I mean, it all, and it does go back to Richard Dawkins, who is a pseudoscientist, and he must be called one accurately. Uh, he's accurately called a pseudoscientist at this point. There's nothing to selfish gene or mimetic theory. Yeah. Um, materialists are the bane of physics researchers now. Um, materialism is basically the belief is that everything's in the physical universe. That materialist naturalism, they're actually considered bullies by a lot of working scientists. Um, and go and go look at some of the stuff Rupert Sheldrake's done. Go look at yeah. who's not, uh, you know, like a fundy Christian. Go look at some of the work. Go look at Inspired Philosophy's channel and look at all of his videos on physics. Yeah. These actually get in the way of scientific inquiry. At yeah. This they're they're a menace to free inquiry i like li, li, i mean using just the the example of the near-death experience research of jeff long which is legitimate science the fact that they'll dismiss that rather than consider it proves that they basically deny evidence i mean you can say jeff long's wrong you can't say it's not evidence yeah anyway Look, come on, let's finish this. Let's well, but, uh, there's a. Uh, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm, <laughs> right, holding I know. I'm, I'm holding you on for way longer. No, there's no, no, a great. Okay. Uh, what's that? It's okay. Go ahead. Okay. There's a great uh, David Bentley Hart quote where he says, "You know, you know, uh, uh, materialism is not a logical deduction. It is not a fact of experience. It's it's a metaphysical prejudice. And as far as metaphysical prejudices go, it's about the least rational. And, and so." That, that's what that's what the thing when you say that you know scientific research is getting hamstrung by 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 uh, materialism. Well, it's not getting hamstrung by a scientific concept. It's getting hamstrung by a metaphysical concept. Yeah, there's in fact materialism at this point is a bad assumption given that all the evidence points against materialism at this point. Yeah. And if you don't know the evidence points against materialism, that shows you how bad science education is. Mm. Um, uh, because really it, it doesn't work, but they're, they're, they're also caught up in something called Popperian falsificationism, which isn't wrong, but isn't the only way to do science either. Yes. Um, in fact, medical tracking surveys, <laughs> quite a few of what, quite a lot of what's considered valid science doesn't work on false. Well, I, actually, uh, 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 Sam Harris is actually a, an, an opponent of the kind of Popper view too. Well, I'm glad to hear he's not that stupid then. Um, <laughs> 
because really Popperianism, uh, never mind. Now we're getting above. Let's push through this. Sorry. Let's push through. Don't be sorry. Let's just push through it. In the fossil fuel industry because they buy the politicians to drag their feet. So corruption is the heart of the issue. But if people were really scientifically literate and they cared about logic and reason, they'd go, oh, this is such a big problem that we're going to be out in the streets tomorrow to say no more oil influence on our politics and fucking do something to get us all renewable green technology. So it's the magical thinking that leads to so many problems. And I think people think it's a benign or whatever kind of thing. No, it's you have to explain to people why you think they're incorrect. I have no animosity, no hatred towards all these Okay, people. I think that's a, I think that's a good place to uh phase this up. Uh, please, demonst please demonstrate your extraordinary claim, Mr. Kalinsky, that believing in an unmoved mover uh, and, and, and a first principle, first cause underlying the laws that govern the universe in any way. Yeah. What does that got to do with global warming? I know. What, 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 what does that got to do with the oil industry? So if I believe the universe has purpose yeah. and is driven by a creative intelligence, uh, which – Physicists, cosmologists, biologists, chemists, yeah. philosophers, you name it. People with IQs bigger than Kyle Holinsky's have argued for, uh... Well, I, I mean, I mean, this, this is kind of a, a, a secular liberal uh, uh, talking point. And there was a book that came out, uh, I guess, maybe two years ago. It's, it was called, I think it was by Jerry Coyne, uh, and it was called Faith versus Fact. Uh, it, of course, they just churn the shit out. I mean, it's just, yeah, we'll just... Throw out, throw it out to these people who just want to hear what they already believe. But uh, of course, it 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 it, it tries to make like liberals as a whole tend to do. They try to make their entire beliefs just a big ball of wax. And they they it, it's like it's like it's just this catamari that that just you know gets everything within it. You know, and so you have the secularism, but it takes in uh, uh you know climate change and it takes in anti anti vaccines i just think it's so ridiculous oh well they're, they're okay, all we gotta go after alternative medicine too because yeah, uh, yeah yeah they're, uh, it's, it's all, by the way oh geez there's there uh, it, it, there's so much to go here i mean i mean i know you know, do you know what do you know uh uh do you know what's the who what which country is the biggest what's the name of that thing where they where they have the water and they shake it 10 times and i always forget the name of that Oh, I, I think I know what you're talking about, and it's supposed to—is it homeopathy? Yeah, 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 homeopathy. Uh, which I don't really have any opinions on, but I don't have any opinions on much alternative medicine, to be honest. Well, the, the their, biggest... their obsession with it is kind of fascinating, though. Yeah, because because you'll see this on, on like atheist Facebook pages, and they have these like, well, this is not this is of no concern to 98 percent of Americans. So why are you? throwing this in the ball of wax where okay now you're acclaiming god as a fairy tale but you can't prove that but uh the biggest consumer of, of homeopathy is is france a very secular country and you say oh well well the anti-vaxxer movement is, is part of this whole uh people believing in god it's bad it's an anti-science attitude well the the anti-vaxxer movement it is by far concentrated in places like Santa Monica and Beverly Hills, very liberal areas. It's not in Birmingham, Alabama, you know? So I, why are you why are you squishing together these these types of people who have nothing to do with each other, you know? This is actually Orwellian. I mean, it is part of why I do say, and I do mean it too, never trust an atheist. I'm sorry if that sounds harsh. Yeah. If you are listening and you say, I'm an atheist, that hurt my feelings. Because uh, I'm not like that. Here's your solution. Do what, they, you, what people have done for thousands of years. Just say, I'm not religious. Because uh, once yeah. you say you're atheist, you're ideologically committed to something. And at this point, okay, notice the trick here. Secular means atheist. Nobody would have accepted that formulation 10 years ago, let alone 20 years ago. These people think they own secularism. Yeah. When, in fact, secularism was created for, by religious people, not so they would stop killing each other per se, but because they they decided to be good Christians because Christians invented secularism. Let's say, in fact, let's be real clear about that. Christians did. Not Muslims, not Jews, not Hindus, not atheists. Hindus, uh, Christians invented secularism, and they did so specifically so they were like, let's find a set of a place where we can all agree with each other. Yes. And what yes. I recall happening with the atheists is it started with, we're not harmful, we're not bad, we also want in on the conversation. And all the Christians were like, well, okay, 
I certainly was for the longest yeah. time, even after I left atheism, someone in, would, would, you know, introduce me to an atheist and they'll even say, do you have a problem with that? And I said, no, not at all. I used to be one too. It's, it's fine. And I might say something like, if you ever want to talk about it, let me know, but you know, we don't have to, I never tried to convert anybody. Yeah. Um, and there's this myth of the big bad Christian who's going to do you in and harass you constantly. No, I'm sorry. All those liberal values you like came from Christians. And yes. it appears that the, the more you take the Christianity out, the serious Christianity, by the way, the more you take it out, the more you get this homunculus, what I would call it. In fact, I've been taking a, noticing this, um, and multiple people have agreed with me. The social justice left, which is clearly going to include this guy, they are culturally, they are bizarro Christians like bizarro yeah. from from superman because what they invariably do is they take an old secular value an old value including secular values they got from christians warp it remove any theological or philosophical underpinnings that are christian basically subtract god and now you have this freaky thing where you know the christian obligation to help the poor becomes a government mandate yeah and the, the, where the name any of it right and secular means atheist and secular means exclude religious ideas. And oh, by the way, we get to decide as the atheists in charge what's religious and what's not. Yeah, yeah. And we get to decide what's science and what's not because we're the atheists in charge. In fact, that's my take, by the way, on the entire anti-social justice atheist phenomenon. Yeah. I'm um, including your Sargon of a. I don't. Know, I don't even hate these people, right? But it's. It's amazing how to me none of them will have a real conversation about this. Yeah. But your Thar Sargons, your Thunderfoots, your Crouton Tees, your Vernaculuses, they're not bad people. They're not hateful people. Um, but they were people who really bought into the uh, social justice left's narrative 10 years ago of atheists as an oppressed class of people and religion as the cause of all the world's woes. And they were told a message, sorry, they were taught a message that they would be the bright new figures bringing on science and reason to people. Yeah. When really they were only just being told what they wanted to hear. Yeah, yeah. And being treated as more intelligent than they actually were. Yeah. Until they were no longer useful, and then the cultural Marxists in the university made the flip three, four years ago, and all the, I call them Menshevik atheists or useful idiot atheists, yes. your Thunderfoots, your Sargons, all those people were thrown out and by, the, you know, in, during the skepticism, wondering what happened. And they're, they're all trying to, you know, armored skeptics, shoe on head. They're trying to reclaim true atheism. And it's like, have you people not figured out that atheism is just incoherent denial of evidence yes. and snotty condescension towards your fellow human beings toward ideas you've never really been challenged on? Because mm. that's everybody I just named, by the way, yeah. has that. They've never been really challenged. And they won't take a challenge because they're all cowards. Yeah. Um, but look at this guy, Kyle Kalinske. He's got, what, half a million subscribers? Yeah. Uh, TJ Kirk's got two millions playing his atheist victim game and spewing hate at children. Uh, it's unbelievable yeah. uh, to me that this trashy phenomenon has gotten this far. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's so distressing when you see organs of the media, it seems, doing everything to encourage these little snotty, culturally illiterate 13-year-olds who, who, who think that they're who think they're smarter than the uh, you know pillars of, of Western civilization? As like they're trying to yes, you do know better. You you can recite those invisible sky fairy memes. Yes, you are. You can say things like I believe in science, and that truly puts you into this elite class of thinker, morally and intellectually superior. Yeah. Even though, of course, you also have no ideology, no identifiable beliefs, and no group traits of all. Yeah. And thus, anything we notice about the way atheists behave must be us just being mean somehow. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I, as an ex-atheist, it's particularly easy me for, to do, to, for me to do this because my brain was locked in this shit for the longest time. It actually felt like a belt had, like, snapped loose, and I was free to think of certain thoughts again. Yes. Like, atheism is bullshit. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that's what happens when I'm discussing with atheists. I'm like, these, the reason they need to congratulate themselves so much is because they're miserable. They have to convince themselves that they've made the right choice because there's absolutely nothing in atheism. It, it is a complete, has, there's no reward for being an atheist. So you no. just have to, you just have to have this overbearing self-congratulation just to just to uh, convince yourself that that you've made the correct choice 
There's you one know? type of atheist I, I have a great deal of sympathy for, and I wish some of them would at least talk to me sometime yeah. or talk to some other people I know. And that's the ones who are religiously abused. Yeah. Um, and, and, and also the ASV types who are just confused, but more yeah. of the point the religiously abused. And, and atheists will slam on and leap on the religiously abused. Uh, unfortunately, I did years of study and work in, on the issue of psychological sexual abuse of children and adults. I used to work with some of the top in the field. I'm very good friends with a woman named Erin Pitsy, I, I, uh, who you can look up and know who she is. Um, one of the world's stellar experts. I've talked to senators. I know people, right? Yeah. Um, abuse is not higher in religious homes. It's just not. So when you have the abuse experience of the bad clergyman, uh, or, the, or the the mom who hit you with a belt and, and made you recite the Ten Commandments, or the dad who, I don't know what, told you you were going to hell and spanked you, or whatever it was. Um, I'm sorry, non-religious people do things like that too. The question is, you know, does the main, would a mainstream Christian approve of that kind of behavior? And the answer is no. Um, and, 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 but, but so if you're listening and you're one of those people who was really religiously abused, please be aware, uh, I was abused by a Catholic hating atheist. That doesn't make me hate atheists, but he was in the secular school system. And guess what? He got covered for. Yeah. So I, I guess I get to blame all seculars for my experience now. Is that how that works, right? I'm not using that as a, a trump card, but just to point out the hypocrisy yeah. of just going straight to religious abuse. Yeah. It, it disturbs me because I've seen these atheists talk about how they have urges to pray and urges to go to church and sing and stuff, and they need support from their atheist friends to prevent, from the, prevent them from doing that. Yeah. What I'm thinking is, why don't you go find a sane church? Even if you don't want to be Catholic, go find some sane Methodists. Yeah. Go, go find some sane. I mean, sane, you know, where they don't have the crazy eyed charismatic preacher. They got somebody who spent a few years in school before he was ordained or whatever it was. I mean, sure, I want you to be Catholic or Orthodox or whatever, but no, there really are sane religious people, and that's what you want because religion is organic, it's natural, people need spirituality, and they get sick without it. Yes, yes. Um, so. Uh, well, I have, I have two. Uh, uh, I I have a, a point to make, and I think a very important point to make. Uh, one is kind of pursuant to what you were saying before that uh, that uh, you know atheists put on this front like they're they're merely just trying to get a seat at the table, but that's actually a lie. Yeah, and, because they want to be in charge of the secularism. Yes. All the secularism are belong to us because we yes. atheists. We're show, showing your age there, but yeah. <laughs> but yes. the, the very first meme, the very first meme there ever was. But no, uh, uh, you can see it like in the promotional materials for like the uh, the Reason rallies. Like, oh, we're asking for a seat at the table. But when you actually hear what they're saying, they're saying, we are their superiors. We we are the future. We'll, they will be relegated to the trash bin of history. And so they're not asking for a seat at the table. They're asking for a seat at the head of the table, you know? Yes, because 10 years ago when the new atheist thing exploded, they were all treated with great respect and like yes. they were brave for being atheists. And they're, they're, they would be nodded at and agreed to as if they were sage and yeah. wise. And they never figured out that, no, you're just another run-of-the-mill atheist. You're being that, used. That's, that's what God Saad is, by the way. I'll call out God Saad. I'm sick of hearing what a victim he is for being an atheist. Um, how nice. Yeah, he's still another one talking about Bronze Age superstitions. No religious person should take him seriously. Yeah, or feel that sorry for him, especially when Christians are being slaughtered all over the place. Yeah, I, I, anyway. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, that's uh, that's a very serious issue. But yeah, uh, atheists should just know whenever you use a phrase like Bronze Age goat herders or Invisible Sky Fairy, I'm tuning you out. If you're on if you're on YouTube and you're on my channel, I'm blocking you. You have nothing to contribute. No, they really don't. And I think more people, uh, not just Christians, any religion, really. Um, uh, Sky Fairy, Imaginary Friend, uh, Teapot, and Santa Unicorn. Uh, Unicorn, yeah, Santa Claus. Uh, those are like immediate, like, okay, you got like one or two more sentences before I just stop talking to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, because it's not, I mean, that sort of thing I used to think was a joke. Even when I was an atheist, I would say it. But then I would be like, oh, I'm just teasing you. I know no. it's deeper and I don't. I didn't quite get it, but I'm like, whatever. People see things different. You're good. 
what happened to that atheist, by the way? I used to know yeah. him. I used to be him like, I, I was an atheist and I loved talking to religious people. Yeah. Not to debunk them, but just try and figure out how their brain work and, and also just see if I would put it all down to psychology, right? But I'd try to be like, okay, well, psychologically, if you look at it that way, I can see the truth in it. I mean, that's a free thinker. And so mm. that's more free thinking than, oh my God. That, that's, people... that's why this that's why the stumper question is uh do you accept the possibility that that belief in god may be rational yeah well that is the stumper question because because no most of them have already decided that no uh -huh. belief in god cannot be rational but they are completely unable to tell you why just like kyle kalinsky here all right i'll tell you what i want to wrap it up just because we've oh, gone okay. an hour no we have sorry, gone an sorry, hour sorry. No, just, oh, you apologize too much i love talking to you brother but I have, this is the crucial point i wanted to make Get it uh, out. so so uh uh kyle here said that he supports freedom of religion yeah and it's okay i don't believe that now no. notice what he also said later on is that people's privately held religious beliefs is impeding scientific progress Yes. He's talking out of both sides of his mouth here. He's like, oh, I support your religious belief. But then on the other hand, he's saying, your privately held religious belief is impeding the future of humanity. If he actually ever assumes the levers of power, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think he's going to respect people's privately held religious beliefs? Or do you think he, since, since, people, since they're impeding this techno-utopia that lies ahead of us, if people divest themselves of religious beliefs, do you think do you think that's what's going to uh, need to be done? You we know, know for a fact that it's every, so disingenuous. It is, especially because we know for a fact that every regime, whether right wing or left wing, that talked like him, yes, eventually got into serious religious repression and persecution. Yeah, uh, Christians usually the favorite target, but sometimes Jews and yes, sometimes even the Muslims get slaughtered by people who talk like Kyle here. And I'm not saying he wants to slaughter them, but I'd like to see him do something other than get huffy when we notice this empirical fact that the connection exists, that atheists yeah. like him, when they get in charge frequently, are dangerous as fuck. Yes. Murderous yeah. as fuck. Now, that's a fact. And if he insists that it's not a fact and it's irrelevant, prove it's irrelevant. Yeah. We do we have a right to be Kyle Kolinsky and fans? Do we have a right to be skeptical of you and your claims? Do we have that right? Do we? I'd like to know. All right. Anything else? I I I, I very much. I I'm sorry for uh, subjecting you to a uh, uh, Kyle Kolinsky here. I I, yeah, I, mean, was, I have kind of my thing. I suggested it. So so yes. Yeah. It saves me the trouble of having to make a response video. Yes. Um, but uh, I, I just want to keep these under an hour because people wander away if you get too long. Listen, yeah. if anybody wants us to take apart an atheist video of, on future episodes, either with me and Deflating Atheism or maybe I'll get somebody else to do it if he's not available, uh, send them to us on the Escaping Atheism through, through direct message because it's open. But please try and make it a good one. I mean, yeah. and by good, I guess I just mean, I don't know, has a big following, so at least we're like saving time. I can't be bothered because most of them, with most atheist videos because they have a tiny following and they just regurgitate the same stuff. But if it's interesting, send it to us, and we'll try and get to it. I, I, otherwise, I, 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 I'm hmm? sorry. The thought was to make this a, a weekly thing that happens every Sunday at seven o'clock. Or that's what I'd really like to do. Yeah, and I'd like to do it with you. Uh, but if you're not available, yeah. we can find other people because um, this is fun to do. Um, we just God make it an interesting video. Um, this was kind of interesting. I actually, maybe I, we might, did you see the black bird or black pigeon? I saw, you know what? Oh let's yeah. 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 What next, uh, let, yeah. Let's, let's figure something out for next week. We've passed an hour. So I'm just going to say this is deflating atheism and escaping okay. atheism. Please subscribe to both our channels. Um, please be supportive. Uh, even if you're an atheist, why don't you try and be an open-minded atheist and start admitting there's problems in your community and problems with how atheists treat other people and problems with how they think, maybe we'll get some better atheists, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Stay, all right. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, uh, catch you later. Remember to support us on subscribe, uh, Patreon, like, and subscribe. Thank you. Have a good day.